Well, hi there. I'm here today with Michael Beach and with Gus Gus and actually a whole lot of other reptiles because we want to talk to you about how to handle reptiles, especially for people who don't have a lot of experience handling reptiles before. Michael is from the Beach House. That you guys do such cool things. Can you tell us a little bit about your channel? Sure. Yeah, it's uh, me and my wife. And we've got four kids, James, Corbin, Ellie, and Charlie. If you want to see more of Clint's presentation that he does with all of these reptiles, go to our channel, The Beach House, and you can see it there. We do daily vlogs. We haven't missed a day in over three years of filming just our family it's life and time. all the homeschool adventures that we go on together and road trips and treasure hunts. It's a lot of fun. They're actually, right now, putting up a video all about the things that they learned with us. And so if you want to check that out, you need to go over to the beach house Do it. and check out their video. Yes. But not yet, because first That's we're right. going to handle these crazy reptiles. Cool. I'm excited. All right. Today we have Charlie here. Are you ready to learn how to handle a reptile? Yeah. Okay. How old are you, Charlie? Uh, Charlie. You're Charlie? That's a good age to be. I remember when I was Charlie. It was the best. Do you want to hold a lizard? Yeah. Okay, so I want to teach you a few rules about holding a lizard. One thing is we have to be so soft and so gentle. Okay? Which means we can't squeeze it. Can you show me what it's like to be soft and gentle? Yeah. Touch my hand really soft and gentle like you would touch a lizard. Good job. Do we squeeze it and hurt it? No. No, never. Do we fling it in the air? Yeah. No! We don't want to fling it in the air because she could get hurt. Do we want to hurt her? No. No. So I'm going to let you pet her real soft. Show me with two fingers how you would pet a lizard. And this is a great way for a little kid like you to touch a lizard for the first time. Can you show me two of your fingers? Just these two. And just give her a little pet. What did you think of that? Did you like that? Yeah. That was the best. Is it okay? Is it okay if I set her right on your lap for a moment? Yeah. Okay. we got to be so calm and so soft. Can you show me how to do that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what do you think of that? You like that? Oh, yeah. she likes you. Yeah. See how she's holding on? That way she doesn't fall. And you just sit there and you just let her hang on to you and look at you. And she's such a happy lizard. Do you like that, Charlie? Yeah. You're doing such a great job. You're teaching everybody a really great way for a little kid like you to get to handle a big solid lizard like a bearded dragon. She's holding on to me. She's holding on to you. You want me to pick her up now? Yeah. Okay, so when I pick her up, I'm going to pick her hands up. I'm going to make sure that I don't have her claws get stuck on any of the fabric on your legs, on your jeans, or on your shirt so that it doesn't hurt her little claws. And she's off. You did a great job, Charlie. Yeah. Did you like that? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you might. Did you want to hold a snake too? Yeah. Okay. Do we have to be soft with the snake just like we were with the lizard? Yeah. Yeah, soft and gentle. Do we throw the snake or do we yeah. keep it nicely in our lap? In the, in the counter. Oh, on the counter? Yeah. Okay, so this is Buttercup and she's my gopher snake. And she's really nice. That's why I trust her, but even. He's in the count. Do you want to touch her real quick? Yeah. What does she feel like? Does she feel slimy or does she feel nice and smooth? Smooth. Smooth and nice. Would you like to? Would you like to have her in your arms? Yeah. Okay. So we don't squeeze her. We never squeeze her because that could really hurt her. So we just leave our hands open like this. Can you show me your hands open like this? Oh, you're so good at this. I'm going to let her sit just a little bit right there with you. Charlie, you are a professional snake handler. Did you know that? Whoa! And that's why an adult should always be there when a, when a kid is holding a snake because if the snake decides to fall... I'm in the counter. Okay, you want me to sit on the counter? I'm watching the bearded dragon because I don't want her to come after my snake. You like me. <laughs> yeah. I like him. You, oh, you are the best. You're yeah. okay by me, Charlie. Can I have a high five? Well, Ellie, how are you doing? Good. How do you feel about this? Are you excited to get to hold a reptile? Mm -hmm. You before were a little bit scared of snakes. Are you feeling better about snakes now? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, he like sneaks a lot better now. Do you remember this one? Yeah. And how old are you, by the way? Four. Four. So right now we're going to show a little bit about how to help Awesome Ellie handle a lizard like this year of Mastix. And I'm going to let you hold a snake too. You like that idea? Okay. The first thing that's really important is just to be gentle with them. You know, to be so soft, right? We never squeeze them and we don't throw them in the air. If you get scared at any time and you want me to take her away, you just say, can you take it now? Can you practice? Take it away. Take it away and I will. I'll take it away right away, okay? What I need you to do is I need you to put your hands out like this. Perfect. And I'm going to be here. It's always important to have an adult when younger children are holding a reptile especially so that the reptile doesn't get hurt, squeezed, or dropped. What do you think? You are holding a lizard all by yourself. What do you think of that? Good. Does it feel nice? Do you want to try holding a snake now? Okay. Take back our Euromastix. Set it right there for a moment. You just sit tight, okay? So this is our ball python. And she's a sweet, sweet girl. You want to touch her before you hold her, or do you just want to go right away and hold her? Okay, why don't you give her a pet? How does she feel? You like how she feels? She's pretty cool? Alright, can you put your arms out just like you did before for the lizard? I'm going to put her up a little bit like that. If you get scared, you just let me know, okay? And I'll take her back. How does she feel? You like that? Is she heavy or, or light? Mm -hmm. She's pretty heavy, isn't she? She's a big girl. You like how she feels? And I'm not quite turning her over to you because I don't want her to accidentally get dropped. But you're doing such a wonderful job. I'm so proud of you. But you have done so awesome. Can I get a high five from you, Ellie? Okay, well, this is Corbin. How old are you, Corbin? Six. You're six years old. And since you're six, I'm going to have a little bit more confidence that you can handle a, a, a snake or a lizard that's a little bit smaller. I had them hold some things that were a little bit bigger and thicker because just in case they squeezed them, I didn't want to give them something little that they could hurt. But I trust you, right? You can handle it. This is our bearded dragon. And when we hold a bearded dragon, you see she's holding on to me, I'm not holding on to her. And so I'm just gonna set her kind of on your hand. So if you just take your hands out like this, and the most important thing is just don't freak out and drop her. If you want me to take her away, you just tell me, take her away. But she's not gonna do anything to hurt you or anything like that. Uh, you might feel her nails be a little bit pokey, but they're not gonna cut you or scratch you or anything. I know. You ready? All right. You're a pro, Corbin. What do you think? How does she feel? It, it feels kind of weird. Kind of weird? Yeah. Like you thought that you would? Or different? Oh, yeah, you're doing a good job. You want me to take her away? Okay, I'll take her away. All right, you want to try holding the snake? Yeah, okay. And this snake. This one's a little bit spiky. This one's a little bit spiky. I'm going to set her right there. And I wouldn't give a snake this small to a kid much younger than you are. Well, I'm not going to squeeze it. I know. That's why I can trust you with her. So you're all ready. You want to put your hands out like you just did? Okay. And you just let her sit on you. And if you want me to take her away, you just let me know, okay? The most important thing is just not to drop her because that could hurt her and not to squeeze her, but you know that. You're doing so well. You all done with her? Yeah. All right, I'll take her away for you. What do you think? Good. Can you believe you just handled a snake and a lizard? Just like that? You're a pro, Corbin, can I get a high five? I'm here now with James. How old are you, James? Eight. Eight. Because James is older, I can trust him with a smaller lizard and a smaller snake. I, I definitely want to pick bigger snakes and bigger lizards, not giant snakes and giant lizards, but bigger ones that could handle a, a squeeze or a drop a little bit better than, than some of the small lizards and small snakes. Not that I want that to happen with any of the kids, but I want to wait until they're a little bit older before they handle something like this crusted gecko. You ready to give this a try? What I'm going to have you do, because he's a jumper, is exactly what you're doing. I'm going to have you have your arms right over the table so that if he jumps off you, he's just going to land on the table. And don't worry about it. You'll be able to tell he's going to jump because he'll bring his back legs forward at the same time, sort of like they are right now, and then he'll just like start to line it up and he'll leap. If he does that, don't freak out. Just let him leap. 
He knows where he's going to land. He'll be fine. He's not going to have any problems at all. He's a professional leaper. Okay, but the most important thing is not to squeeze him. You ready for this? All right, put your hands out flat. Now, the best way to pick up a crested gecko is just to take your finger and stick it right under their chin, and they will just walk right up on top of you. Sometimes people try to grab them, and that kind of causes them to freak out. And that's actually why a lot of them lose their tails. It's because people do that. So just take your hand, stick it right under his chin, and he'll just walk right onto you. And don't squeeze him. Yeah, just leave your hand, open your thumb so it's just wide open. There. Just like if you were sitting on the hand of a giant, you wouldn't just want to fall off, would you? You'd hold on on your own. And so you wouldn't want the giant to squeeze you either so that you don't fall. You got him. What do you think about the way that he feels? He actually feels great. Cool. Feels really cool, huh? When you were petting him, he was starting to bring his foot forward because he was thinking about taking a leap. You're doing a great job. Okay, I'm going to do just like you did. I'm going to put my finger underneath his chin. I'm going to give him a little poke in the rear just so he'll go ahead and walk up and just to give him a little support. I'm going to set him here. Let's make sure he doesn't fall through any holes. Make sure he doesn't fall through any holes. He's pretty good about that. But he might, he might take off running. If he does, should we try to stop him? Should we slam our hand on top of him? Nah, he's not going to go anywhere. We'll just let him go where he goes, okay? So what I've got here is a sand boa. And because you're a little bit older, I've got the smallest snake that I've had anybody hold so far because I wouldn't trust a little kid with a little snake either. And I'm going to move the gecko so that it's not so close to the snake just because I don't want them to not get along. But I want to teach you how to pick a snake up all the way from the ground. So not just when somebody hands it to you, but if it's here. If a snake is ever staring right at you and wherever you go it follows, don't touch it. It's probably going to bite you. But if a snake is like this and it doesn't seem to care that much about you, what I do is I usually give it just a little touch here on the backside so that it knows that you're going to handle it and it's not getting fed. So just give it a little handle and then you just kind of scoop it up just nice and gentle like that and just let it sit on you and I'm going to show you a technique. It's called treadmilling. And so if the snake starts to go forward, I just put my hand in front of the front of it and I just let it go where it wants to go and you can see how it's moving forward a little bit. And once it gets a long way forward, then I'll move my other hand back to the front. Can you handle that? So I'm going to set it all the way down. Remember to give it a little touch in the back half and just so it knows you're picking it up and then just give it a nice gentle scoop. Nice job. Nice job. You're doing a perfect job. What does it feel like? Cool. You are a professional at this. That is so awesome. I'm going to scoop him, and I'm going to do just like you did. I'm going to bring my hand to the front, and that's the best way to take a snake from another person, is to just stick your hands under the front of the snake and let the snake kind of crawl onto you. But I need one free hand so I can get a high five. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my name is Rebecca Beach, and I am the mom to all those four kids you just saw. And I also have another channel called Pins and Things where I make costumes and crafts and recipes and cosplay stuff and it's just a really fun channel, so. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Okay, this uh, is actually one of the harder things I have to handle, which is why oh, I've really? saved it for you. And I, I've done something funny. I, I've let everybody hold a lizard and a snake, right? For you, I'm letting you hold a legless lizard and a snake with legs. <laughs> So, the legless lizard is going to be kind of different from the way that snakes are. His body is a lot more rigid mm -hmm. than a snake, and so he doesn't really hold on to you very well. And so this treadmilling thing is going to be really important, which just means that you keep your hands out kind of just under the front part of his body, and then a backhand towards the back, and as that front hand becomes the backhand, then you just move up. And he'll move a lot on you. The worst thing that he might do is he might roll. <laughs> Um, or do that. He can move quickly and he can roll and the, the, key, the most important thing will be to never grab him. Okay. But he will dart on us a little bit. He'll whip around. He's just a goofball. He's not gonna bite you. That These are so just weird, kind of difficult to handle. Okay. And so okay. what I'm gonna have you do is I'm just gonna, instead of bringing my hand forward, I'll just have you put a hand under the front of him as he goes forward. And then you can do the next one. <laughs> and you'll be tempted to grab him. Don't grab him. Okay. Just let him sit there. Good job. 
And no, as he really. goes for it, yeah, not, <laughs> this is this is money right here. This is like I said, this is one of the hardest things I have to handle. Interesting. But you're doing a great job. Well, thanks. He is too. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why I'm doing a good job. <laughs> it has a line down its side. That's a really good what observation. So these guys are closely related to the alligator lizard. Did it just hiss? Yeah, he does that oh. a lot. He's all bluff. <laughs> but because you can feel how his body's super rigid. Yeah. Ooh. When he eats or when he breathes, his body needs to expand and contract. Remember, don't squeeze him. Just keep your hands open and let him sit on you. Okay. And he'll be good. Oh, you're doing such a good job. But when he breathes, you'll notice that that line can contract and open. Yeah. It's like an expansion groove. And that's an area where the armor is not so stiff so okay. that he can expand and contract. <laughs> this is out of my comfort zone. Even when you say lizard, I'm like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not what I think is a lizard. <laughs> if they want to figure out why he's a lizard and not a snake, you're going to have to watch the video that we on just filmed channel. with them on their channel. You'll learn all about it. You're doing a great job. You ready for a snake? Sure. Snake's going to be super easy by comparison. <laughs> so I'm going to set this one all the way on the table. Okay. Because I'm going to teach you how to pick one up from the ground. Okay. And we'll, we're going to pretend like it's in its enclosure because that's something that a lot of people might need to learn how to do. A snake, when it is in its enclosure, sometimes it can be what people will call like cage defensive. Ball pythons are not particularly bad about this, but they do sometimes think they're getting fed when you open up their enclosure and you don't want to stick your hand in and for them to confuse that with food. Mm -hmm. And so what I do always first thing is I pay attention to what the snake is doing. You notice how this snake isn't looking at you? Mm -hmm. That's great news. Okay. If the snake is fixated on you and just staring at you and wherever you move it follows you, that is a snake that is thinking about biting you. Mm. And don't reach at them. Okay. And, you know, snakes are not super fast, generally speaking. They're not going to run you down. They actually have no interest in biting you. But mm. if you make it a necessity for them, they'll do it. I'm always going to touch the snake somewhere away from its head where it can't bite me right away, just so it knows I'm coming, so I don't surprise it and scare it. And just give it a little bit of contact, and then once I've done that, I can just kind of scoop it up. I, I never squeeze it hard, I just kind of scoop it up and get under it, and then I'll handle it a lot like I did with that legless lizard, except you'll see snakes are a lot more flexible than mm -hmm. the legless lizard. They're going to hold on to you a lot better than the legless lizard does, did. Ball pythons especially, they're really mellow, they're not going to whip around or roll or do any of that crazy stuff that you were okay. just dealing with. Yeah. <laughs> this, is a, this is a cake animal to handle by comparison to what you just did. So. Go ahead and take it away. Okay. I'm here, snake. Don't bite me. That was perfect. An animal with no ears, you told it exactly what it needed to hear. <laughs> oh, it's actually heavier than I thought. Do I need to be holding it up by its head? I mean, you're doing perfect. It's so big. Do I put it in my lap? That'll work. What do you think of that? Uh, it's big. <laughs> <laughs> a little easier than the legless lizard though, huh? Yeah, I think so. Some snakes Stranger. can be a lot faster. and But the ball pythons, they're just great. Yeah. Cool. So I'll take He's the front end of her. All right, well, Michael, you have the most experience with reptiles. Right. You, you grew up in, in Florida. You kept <laughs> a lot of reptiles. You even had a green iguana, which you handled until it was unhandleable, right. which is very <laughs> common for green iguanas. We'll get to them in the future, but don't buy one on a whim. Because you have the most experience handling things, I've saved all the big guns for you. Awesome. Okay, exciting. so this is Gus Gus, cool. and he's a big dude. And so the best way to handle a tegu, I don't pick mine up that much. I mean, he's like a puppy, so if he's just on the ground, he's, he's no problem at all. But if you really are inclined to pick him up, okay. usually what you're going to do is you're going to put one hand sort of under the base of his tail okay and the other underneath his arms under his chest okay and you're just gonna let him sit on you like this okay okay and that's the best way to do it so I'm gonna have I'm gonna turn you loose okay on tegus okay he may roll on you if he does just kind of let up and let him roll just try not to let him hit the floor okay it's alright. Doesn't like being held. 
There's the wall. <laughs> there, that, he just wanted a hug. He wanted a hug. That's right. I promise you. That was a kiss. I'm pretty that was great. This is why we saved the big gun for you. Now, just let him walk across your back, and I'll help okay. you out. Right. Having a spotter is a good idea with a big lizard like this. <laughs> He's just a dude, isn't he? Yes. And there's, I'm, I'm really, as long as you're okay with him sitting up there, I don't, mind. I don't have a problem. I'm doesn't just making sure he doesn't fall off the backside. Yeah. It's fun. I like, I like it a lot. So his tail could come off, huh? His tail could come off, um, but he's at this size. Probably it'd be not. very unlikely that right. he'd do that. Good. Hey, dude. What do you think of that? It's... Do you ever worry about him using the bathroom while he's sitting on you? Um, well, when he's sitting on me, I worry about it. Yeah? When he's sitting on you, I'm not so concerned. <laughs> <laughs> My shoulder feels wet. Oh, is that that's exciting. Could it happen? Uh, uh, that's probably just perspiration. <laughs> <laughs> if it came from him, you'd know about it. Okay. <laughs> then maybe not. This is fun. You let me know if you want me to get him down. But this is about as good as it gets. This is as good as it gets. He just uh, wanted to sit on your shoulder. He he's did like that, that little flip and he's like, and now we're cool. <laughs> All right. We're friends now. All right. You ready for the next big yeah, gun? Yeah, that was fun. All right. Let's get him down. Okay. Give me a Oops, little nail. All right. That was awesome. Inside of this cooler is my big boa. She's about seven feet long. Her name is Ember. She's a Central American boa. I love boas. Uh, boas are fantastic, but I trust them a little bit less than I trust snakes like ball pythons. Okay. Uh, they can be just a little bit bitier. Okay. I've never been bitten by one, okay. but I'm careful about it. And okay. I'm more careful about the way that I interact with other people. So one thing that I always do when I'm handling a boa, especially if other people are around, is I keep one hand up near their head, mm -hmm. which they're not usually going to strike at what they're on. Right. But I may, that limits their strike range right. so that they don't hit somebody who's like three feet away from me. The other thing is she's in a box. She's in a container right now, and she doesn't know the nature of our interaction when okay. we open this. So we don't want to freak her out. What you're going to do, don't go right at her face, but just gently come in back sort of behind her head and just scoop her up a little bit. And there's a lot to her, so you're going to have to hand over hand her out of here. Okay. Make sure she's not fixated on you. If she's fixated on you, unfortunately, we're pretty much trapped right now. So <laughs> we're going to pretend like she's the T-Rex in Jurassic Park and we're just going to hold still and hope for the best. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's do this. Yeah. So are you picking her up or no? Nope. Okay. All right. So you see her in there. She's gonna poke her own head on out. If she doesn't, that's okay. Okay. You can get a look in there. And what I do is I touch part of her body that is not her head, mm -hmm. and that is as far away from her head as I can, mm -hmm. so that she knows I'm picking you up and I'm not gonna hurt you or anything. I'm gentle okay. and nice. But if she comes out on her own, that makes life even easier. Okay. So it looks like she might not. So I would recommend, you see her head poking up over here, mm -hmm. I would just gently touch her down on this side. Okay. You're doing a good job. Now you can, she's she's totally cool just with chill. you being there, so you can just go ahead and scoop under she's her She's hissing. Bit. She's not hissing. That's a good observation. She's a big snake and she's exhaling. Okay. Boas are some of the best hissers I've ever seen. Yeah. They hiss with their mouth wide open and go Right. And I've even heard them growl. No They're way. the only snakes I've ever heard growl. I've heard big red-tailed boas go <laughs> And that's intimidating. That's just breathing. Okay, that's... That scared you. That's, that's just a big snake of breathing. I've never breathing. heard a snake hiss before. Yeah, you got her. She's not concerned at all. That's breathing. Scary breathing. Scary breathing. That's what we call the scary breathing. <laughs> You're nailing this. Am I doing all right? You're doing fantastic. Okay. And you got your hand right where I'd like to keep a hand. And I just never reach right at her face. Right. That's, you know, I, I avoid anything that's coming right at her head. But right. you're doing perfect. So keep your left hand where it is. Okay. And just... Now, now go ahead and put your right hand basically where your left hand is, just slightly in front of it. Okay, right here? Yeah, now use your left hand to just grab more of her body and pull that out. She's so heavy. Yeah, she's a big girl. I'll get this cooler out of your way as soon as you've got her. And you can actually put some of her weight up around your neck if you want. I use my shoulders a lot with the big snakes. Should I put her middle around my neck? Any part you want. Okay. And I'll hold this still for you. All right. Oh, you're doing great. <laughs> oh, 
Look at that. There we go. Look at that. Oh, this is great. Now, boas, do they constrict their prey? They do, and constriction is a little bit different than we thought up until recently. We used to think that they choked things to death. Right. But I've noticed they start eating it within like 30 seconds. Before a lot it's of time. dead, right? Nothing gets choked to death in 30 seconds. But what they do is they actually stop the blood from moving. Oh. Which causes them to have cardiac arrest and die. Oh, no And way. so they die very quickly compared to choking. Right. Oh, this is great. I just love it. Love this. Reptiles are my favorite animals. You have good taste. I love reptiles. That's, That's so a good guy. Yeah. So <laughs> if that does freak you out, just wrap this thumb inside of her body a little bit. Right here? Yeah, now her strike range is limited to that far. Okay. Well, it has been amazing being here with, with you and with your family. It's been so awesome getting to learn a little bit more about how to handle reptiles, because it's been a long time since it was my first time handling a reptile. And so it was great that we got to share with all of these excellent people. Absolutely. As always, please like and subscribe. Make sure to check out the Beach House and the video that we just recorded with them. There will be a link right, right now. And we hope to see you real soon. Well, well, hi, hi there. there. Thank God. We got a clacker? Oh, He's right. looking at Joseph. Yeah. He's going to fall down. It looks like a bad rendition of a snake, doesn't it? It really it's does. Like a and it is. There's the hole. <laughs> Nice thing is, because we've got her up high, if she bites you, it will be on the face. Oh. Which makes for just a really excellent bit of footage. Fantastic. I'm glad it's on our channel. Yes. <laughs> Generally speaking, the more closely related you are to an organism, the more diseases that you can get that it can carry. And we're fairly distantly related <laughs> to snakes, and so there's not that much that they have that we can get. There is one animal, though, that, can, that carries literally everything that can make you sick. Really? They're called humans. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you touch a snake, it's a good idea to wash your hands. If you've touched a human, though, like, definitely <laughs> okay. wash your hands. I was, I was scared, scared really for fun. you. Were you? Yeah. I was, <laughs> <laughs> after that intro, <laughs> <laughs> turned yeah. into a T-Rex.